Hi, am I in the air? Do I have everybody's attention now? Do I have everybody's attention now? Don, I got you. Don, I Do I have everybody's Sunday attention night. now? You put them cameras on me, then you must be willing To get that heart touched, this a must-see feeling The news ain't good, then it must be villain So I say it's bad ground and I don't trust these feelings Spread across your nose, and I'm on your air High as Max on the cloud Am I in the air, Sunday nights, prime time I flex my bed of Ultron, transform to DX Don Mega and off-scene, you probably think I'm nice Cause I slow like a stream to your wireless device And the smoke full of steam on any given night, how short like a piece of any given slice. Uh, and for the latest and what is best about I tune in and tune the rest out, Don. You gotta tell them, am I in the clear? Is this thing gone? Am I on the air? On the air. Welcome, welcome, welcome to your favorite entertainment podcast on the interwebs. This is Am I on the Air? My name is Don Mega. I am your host, and I'm so happy that you're here to join me today for another brand new edition of Am I on the Air? It's season 25, episode 8, and tonight's show is titled Be Kind, Please Rewind. We're broadcasting live from the Red Dragons Radio Studios on a Monday. It is November the 7th, 2022. Uh, We're going to be talking about the entertainment news between November 1st and today, November 7th. Um, And breaking it all down for you guys. So thank you so much for joining me. Hey, I want to start off with a plug right out the gate. You know Peeps. Peeps is my buddy. He always comes on. We do our Am I Still on the Airs, which by the way, if you haven't heard our Black Adam spoiler review... What are you waiting for? Make sure you check that out. Uh, But Peeps does his own podcast called The People's Forum, and he invited myself and Friggins onto his show um, the other night to talk about She-Hulk. That's right. She-Hulk ended a couple weeks ago, and we wanted to do the big culmination breakdown of the Disney Plus series, what we liked, what we didn't like, our overall ranking of the MCU TV shows, and it was a ton of fun to talk some She-Hulk. So, If it was a show you liked and you want to hear us break it down, head on over to the People's Forum over on reddragonsradio.com and make sure you check out that episode. It was uh, a blast to do. So with our plug out the way, we usually do our non-spoiler movie and TV show reviews right at the beginning, and um, I will do that, but I don't have any movies to talk about. It was a slow weekend at the box office. Black Adam was number one once again for the third week, but we've already reviewed that. We've reviewed it on spoiler. We reviewed it spoiler. So there's no movies to talk about. So we're going to skip movies this week, but we do have a handful of TV shows to get into, uh, some new and some returning. So, uh, I'm going to start with a new one. And this kind of was the inspiration of the be kind, please rewind, For those of you that go back to the day of renting movies at a video store. Because there's a new comedy out right now on Netflix called Blockbuster. And Blockbuster is a show I've been waiting for. Because it's from the people that did Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And I love Brooklyn Nine-Nine. It also stars Randall Park. Which I think Randall Park is excellent. I love his comedic delivery. It has Melissa Fumero which was on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and she is incredible and gorgeous to look at. Um, And it just has this really nice little ensemble cast that takes place. Uh, J.B. Smoove is on this show as well, too. He's really funny when he pops up. And, of course, it takes place in the last blockbuster in America. And uh, Randall Park is the manager of the blockbuster, and he's trying to keep it going before they get shut down. Um it's a fun little workplace comedy. This kind of fills the void that Superstore was at. Um, and it's pretty good. I don't love it as much as I had hoped to based on what I saw originally and based on the cast, based on the people behind it. I had super high expectations. It didn't quite hit that. But it's still pretty damn funny, and I do enjoy the show. Uh, there's 10 episodes out available to binge, of course, because it's Netflix. Uh, I have watched the first six so far, and uh, like I said, I really like it. It It's really carried 
by Randall Park and Melissa Fumero. And if they're not in this, this show probably sucks. <laughs> but they're so good. JB Smooth, when he pops up, is good. So all of that makes the show worthwhile to me. So if you're a fan of, you know, little half hour comedy sitcoms, I think you'll like Blockbuster. Make sure you check it out over on Netflix. Let's see here. What else we got that's new? Okay, so keeping up with the new stuff, I checked out the new George Lopez, speaking of comedy sitcoms, uh, George Lopez show, which is called Lopez versus Lopez. And it's basically a show with him and his daughter. And it is his real life daughter on the show. And basically he was like a bad dad and now he's trying to reconnect with his daughter. Um, so watch the first episode the other night and it's pretty funny. It's cheesy, but you kind of expect certain stuff to be cheesy when you're watching a sitcom, especially a sitcom on regular primetime television. They're pretty cheesy. Um, but if you're a fan of George Lopez and you like his style of comedy, I think you'll like this because he brings a lot of his like stand up kind of demeanors and presentations to this show. And I thought his daughter was pretty solid as well, too. So I would say give it a shot and see what you think. So Lopez versus Lopez, which is on NBC on Friday nights, also streams on Peacock. And then the new episodes of Marvel Studios Legends have dropped because this Friday is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I'm so excited for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I'll be seeing it this Thursday on the preview night in IMAX. Super, super excited. But um, before a new movie or TV show drops, Marvel does these Legends episodes, which are like recaps of the characters on Disney+. Plus. So they dropped three new Legends episodes. They did one on T'Challa, they did one on Shuri, and they did one on the Dora Milaje. So um, these were great. They were awesome recaps just to get us up to speed, and we're ready to rock. I watched, I rewatched Black Panther on Saturday with my daughter and uh, got us ready to go see the new one in the theater, man. Love doing the little recaps. So check out Legends over on Disney+. Plus. Okay, the next set of shows are basically new seasons and returns, so I just want to touch on them real quick. My favorite one, Titans is back. Titans, of course, based on the Teen Titans in the DC Universe, Nightwing, Starfire, Beast Boy, Raven, right? We got all the Teen Titans here. And this is season four over on HBO Max. They dropped the first two episodes, and they're awesome. They're really, really awesome. Uh, I love this show. And if you're a DC fan, not enough people watch this show. I mean, even like my boy Friggins, who's a massive DC fan and a massive Nightwing fan, hasn't watched this show since season one. And I don't understand it. This show is so good, and it's the most, like, it's rated R, it's graphic, it's violent. Like, it's everything people want DC to be. And not enough people support this show. I mean, I guess enough people support it that they keep getting new seasons. But I need more to support it to make sure it doesn't get canceled. Uh, but this season is off to a bang. We got Mother Mayhem in this. We got Brother Blood. We're going spiritual. We got Azeroth, Metreon, Zinthos. <laughs> we got a lot of stuff going down. Um, you know, Superboy. We got Lex Luthor in this one. Um, it, there's a lot going on. And I, this season has kicked off with a bang. And I am ready for it all. New episodes drop on Thursdays on HBO Max. Make sure you check out Titans Season 4. Also dropping on HBO Max is White Lotus Season 2. Now, White Lotus was a show that I liked, I didn't love. I wanted more out of it. But it had a great cast, and it kept me kind of coming back for more. So Season 2 now is basically a different cast, doing the same thing at a resort. And we're trying to figure out this kind of murder mystery. Um... I've only watched the first episode, and it was just okay for me. I don't like this cast and crew as much as I did season one. Um, season one had a great cast, so I'm a little iffy on it. But I did like the I did like the first episode enough to want to continue. So season two is now or episode two is now streaming. I just haven't got to it yet, uh, but I wanted to make sure you guys knew that White Lotus is back. Season two on HBO Max. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, I'm James Lovino, and I'm here to tell you about Alternate Sides, a movie podcast with a twist. I've worked in the film business for two decades, but I haven't actually seen that many movies, and this has been driving my frequent collaborator, Sam, a self-confessed film snob, crazy. 
So every week, while he's stuck in his car trying to avoid getting a parking ticket, thanks to New York City's alternate side parking regulations, we discuss a classic film I've finally just gotten around to seeing, Alternate Sides, a new podcast about movies, parking, and a 25-year friendship, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, American Horror Story. I have such a love-hate relationship with this show because season 11 just started, and over the years, this show was definitely must-see television, right? Uh, season one, two, three, I think through five were was incredible. And then after we got through those first five seasons, it just each year just got a little worse and a little worse and a little worse to almost it's unbearable to watch now. My wife tapped out on this show, but season 11 came out and I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. The first episode of season 11 was horrible, horrible. I hated it. Um, I watched episode two just to see if it got any better. It didn't. Um, I'm going to probably have to tap out of this season. I don't like it at all. Uh, and it saddens me because I love the concept of American Horror Story. I love that it's like this anthology series and every season is something different. But this season has pretty much lost me. It takes place in the early 90s in New York City. And it's just not cutting it for me. So that's American Horror Story season 11. And lastly, uh, my, one of my favorite comedy sitcoms is back, Young Rock. That's right, the uh, story about The Rock and his younger years told through his, you know, like age 8, 9 era, age like 15 era, and then age like 20 era. Um, and I love this show. It's so funny. And Randall Park is on this show as well, too. So double dose of Randall Park. Uh, but yeah, Young Rock is back for season 3 premiere episode. They moved it to Friday nights, so it's on NBC and it's also on Peacock. Season three premiere was great. This show is super funny. I love it. And of course, I love The Rock. So this is always going to be a great show for me. And I just want to let y'all know it's back. And it's funny, funny, funny. So a lot of TV stuff, guys. We got Blockbuster on Netflix. We got White Lotus season two over on HBO Max. We got Titan season four on HBO Max. We got American Horror Story season 11, which is on FX and on Hulu. We got Marvel Studios Legends streaming over on Disney+. Plus. We got Lopez vs. Lopez over on NBC and Peacock. And Young Rock Season 3 over on NBC and Peacock as well. So there you guys go on the new TV front. Let's talk box office. Coming in at number 10 is Terrifier 2. Number 9 is Halloween Ends. Number 8 is Till. Number 7 is Banshees of Insurin. Number six is Lao Lao Crocodile. Number five is Pray for the Devil. Number four is Smile. Number three is Ticket to Paradise. Number two is One Piece Film Red. And number one for the third week in a row is Black Adam. Only dropping 33% this week, which is really outstanding. So uh, great job there for Black Adam. All right, that's our box office. Let's switch gears and let's get into our news of the week. Starting streaming today on HBO Max is Don't Worry Darling. I know a lot of you missed this one when it was in theaters just about a month ago, um, a month and a half ago or so. But yes, it's a ready hit. Um, HBO Max, Don't Worry Darling with Florence Pugh um, started streaming today for free on HBO Max. I definitely think you should check out this movie, especially on HBO Max. You know, I don't know if I tell you to run to the theater to see it, but it is definitely good enough to watch at home. I'll probably watch it again here soon, so check that out. Okay, uh, A Christmas Story. You know, we have a new sequel coming, A Christmas Story Christmas, and we got the first full trailer finally for it. It takes place 40 years after the original film, and we see all the boys from the original film grown up now with families of their own getting ready to do Christmas all over again. And this is coming to HBO Max as well. Speaking of HBO Max, we also have the season three trailer for His Dark Materials, and you can preview the final season of season three and the final season over from HBO. Lapita Nuango, she has signed on to star in the Quiet Place spinoff. That's right. Remember, they're doing a spinoff in the universe of a Quiet Place, and she is going to lead. So, love Lupita Nuango. She's a great addition. So, this will be pretty cool there. Do you remember that Scarlett Johansson TV show, Lucy? 
Well, it's getting a TV series adaptation. That's right. Um, so interesting, interesting. I like most of Lucy. The movie loses me in the last like 20 minutes of it. But for the most part, it's a pretty solid film. So I would love to see. Now, I'm seeing some conflicting reports that it's kind of a straight up TV version of Lucy. I've also seen reports that say it's kind of a spin off in the same universe. So it might take place with someone else, not Lucy herself, but someone else kind of dealing with these powers uh, that she's been given. So it might just take place in the universe of Lucy. So. Um, either way, we know Scarlett Johansson ain't coming back for this, but I do like the idea of a Lucy TV series. Agatha, Coven of Chaos has been stacking up some casting, and uh, they have added Heartstopper's Joe Locke to the cast. Shazam! Fury of the Gods has officially um, finished post-production, so that is pretty cool there. Um, glad to see that, because that means the film is locked. And ready to go for the masses when it drops in March. Uh, so they are done. Disenchanted. We have the new trailer for Disenchanted, which is the new Disney Plus sequel to Enchanted with Amy Adams. So this is coming out very soon and looks really, really cute. Uh, we have the trailer for The Eternal Daughter, which is Tilda, uh, Tilda Swinton uh, playing a mother-daughter duo. So I'm sure that's going to be pretty crazy. Uh, the Last of Us is hitting HBO and HBO Max in January, so we are not very far away from that. Just want to let you know that Black Panther 2 uh, only has one post credit scene, so don't stay all the way to the end. There's only something in the mid-credits, and then that is it. They said the film ends the way they want it, and they didn't want to tag anything else to the end. Mayor of Kingstown Season 2 has dropped its first teaser trailer. Of course, Jeremy Renner stars in this for Paramount+. Plus. Uh, it, this was a good show. I really liked uh, Mayor of Kingstown, so I am ready for Season 2. All right, the Winchesters and uh, Walker Independence are going to be uh, running on the CW here very soon, even though the future of the CW is unclear. Um, cause yeah, it's getting bought out and we don't know what's going to end up happening here. So, um, we'll have to stay, uh, posted here and keep our eyes on this, but it looks like the Winchesters and Walker independence will be debuting their first seasons here soon. Becoming Elizabeth has been canceled after just one season over on stars. Fate, the Wink saga has been canceled over on Netflix after just two seasons. Rachel Stenton has joined Rennie Harlan's The Strangers remake over at Lionsgate. Um, Disenchanted premieres on Disney Plus November 18th, so we're getting close to that one hitting. We have the new poster for Avatar The Way of Water, along with the brand new full trailer. Whew, what a trailer, guys. This trailer for Avatar 2 was outstanding. Out freaking standing it's so beautiful this thing i'm so so excited for avatar i can't tell you one of my most anticipated movies of the year we're only a month away from it and you got to check out this trailer it doesn't give away really anything for the story it just looks beautiful and kind of gives you glimpses and that's all i wanted and it's glorious speaking of trailers the new uh trailer for spirited Dropped. This is the new um, Christmas movie with Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell. This is hitting limited release in theaters on November 11th and will hit streaming on November 18th over on Apple TV+. Plus. This trailer was great. This movie looks super funny and I cannot wait to see it. I might hopefully, I might even try to search this out in the theaters this weekend maybe. So we'll see. Uh, PlayStation VR 2, I know we don't talk too much about gaming, but I've been waiting for the VR 2. We finally know it's going to drop February 22nd, 2023, and it's going to retail for $550. Uh, Pre-orders will begin on November 15th, so I am ready. Sign me up. Sign me up! Uh, on December 16th, get ready to return to Pandora. Once again, check out the Avatar Way of Water trailer and make sure you watch the movie in 3D and IMAX because you know it's going to be so beautiful. So beautiful. Uh, for those of you that love Sandman, and that was not me, but a lot of people did, Sandman is returning. It has been greenlit for a season two over on Netflix. 
Uh, WandaVision spinoff, Agatha Coven of Chaos. As I told you, they're doing the casting and they have added Aubrey Plaza to the cast, supposedly as a villain. And we're all assuming she's going to be some crazy witch. But uh, we love Aubrey Plaza. And I think this is a great addition for the Agatha show. So very excited to see this. It sounds like it's going to be nine episodes. They're getting ready to start filming. Let's go. Uh, So the Russo brothers are producing a live action Hercules remake And they were talking about TikTok influence And a lot of people were going crazy saying like Why has this got TikTok influence? We don't want a TikTok movie And all they were really saying is that You know, like a lot of people are interpreting music into dance Like on TikTok And that's what they kind of wanted to do here Is do like interpretive kind of dance To the musical numbers in Hercules So I think people really took this whole thing Out of context Um, But I think it's an interesting take To do something unique and fresh So we'll see how it plays out Um, Showtime has added Everything everywhere all at once I know a lot of people have been asking Is there anywhere you could stream that And now you can check it out over on Showtime Clancy Brown is joining the cast of the boys spinoff Gen V The Mandalorian Season 3 coming out in early 2023, looking like it's going to drop in February. This has not been confirmed, but this is what the rumors are stating for now. We have the season finale trailer for Dead to Me. Um, I love this show, and I've been waiting for this show forever. It's probably been almost three years since this last season. Uh, Netflix is really crazy at their gaps sometimes, but this was a COVID problem. And then, of course, Christina Applegate, she started filming this new season and then got diagnosed with MS, and she had to take a break, and then they had, she had trouble filming because of her nerves. And uh, it's just a really sad story, very, very sad for Christina Applegate. Um, but she powered through, man, and this show is super funny with her and Linda Cardinelli. And I'm excited for this. This new season drops in just a couple weeks on Netflix, and it will be the final season. Do you remember a little Mark Wahlberg movie that came out back in September called Father Stew? Well, I guess it made a decent amount of money, even though I didn't think it did anything. (laughs) But um, it was rated R, and I guess they re-edited it and made a PG-13 cut, and they're going to release it in December back in theaters again. So... It's really interesting that they're doing it with this film, but um, because I believe you can already stream this on Netflix <laughs> right now, so kind of interesting they're going to put it back in theaters. Jennifer Lawrence has officially dropped out of the new Adam McKay movie Bad Blood, um, which was set to she was set to portray Elizabeth Holmes in the movie, but the Elizabeth Holmes story was just told on Hulu in the show The Dropout with Amanda Seyfried, and Jennifer Lawrence straight up was like, you know what? Amanda Seyfried did an amazing job on that show, and they told a great story, and I don't see the need to redo it. So she left the project, so good for her being like, this is dumb, we already have a great version of this, I don't want to waste anyone's time. So yeah, she has officially dropped out. We don't know what's going to happen with the project going forward here. Uh, The Electric State, which is the new Russo Brothers upcoming Netflix film, um, they already started filming, but they've just added Giancarlo, uh, Giancarlo Esposito and Ki Hu Kwan to the cast, so that's pretty cool there. Um, the Walking Dead, Dead City, has released its first teaser trailer for the Negan and Maggie spinoff. It's funny that we already have the teaser trailer for that, even though they've been milking the last season of The Walking Dead for like the last two years. Mads Mikkelsen is set to reunite with his Hannibal creator for a new horror film called Dust Bunny. Um, supposedly there was a scrapped post credit scene teasing Dr. Fate, um, for Black Adam. So, um, very interesting there. I don't know if this was ever confirmed, but this was a rumor going around that there was a very end end credit scene that would have teased Dr. Fate in uh, his future in the DCU. So interesting, interesting. Um, let's see here. We already talked about that. Uh, Mark Strong is joining Joel Kinnaman. In the new thriller, The Silent Hour. I love Mark Strong, so great addition there. And Hathaway um, says her role in the new thriller, Mother's Instinct, was the hardest she has ever played. So, ooh, good for her, man. You know, stepping it up. Anthony Mackie and Billy Bob Thornton have also joined The Electric State, the new Russo Brothers film. So they're really stacking this cast. This already has Millie Bobby Brown. It's already got Chris Pratt. Um, now you got Anthony Mackie, Giancarlo Esposito, Billy Bob Thornton. So really, really good stuff. Um, 
let's see here. Pitch Perfect, Bumper in Berlin. We have the new trailer for the Adam Devine Pitch Perfect spinoff where he goes to Germany. Uh, this is coming to Peacock, and uh, I like this trailer. I'm not the biggest fan of the Pitch Perfect series, but I like that we're kind of spinning off his character, and we're going to kind of keep it in the same vibe, so that's coming soon to Peacock. Uh, Adult Swim's Tucka and Birdie has been canceled again. That's right, series creator hopes to finish the story someday. Um, but yes, the show has been canceled. Um, Firefly Lane, we have the trailer for the new um, season that's coming to Netflix soon, so make sure you check that out. Ravi Patel has boarded Kiss of the Con Queen, which is a new true crime thriller. Uh, let's see here. Universal's A Deadly Education has enlisted Miss Marvel director Mira Menon uh, to take that over. Paramount hits nearly 67 million global subs as Paramount Plus grows to 46 million. So good to see. I love seeing the streaming services grow. So good for Paramount Plus. Um, Peacock has dropped a new um, political thriller called The Independent. Um, this movie came out of nowhere. It has John Cena in it. I was like, what? I never, I, I follow John Cena and did not hear anything about this movie. Um, it's actually got a decent little cast. I don't know if I'll watch it though. It looks kind of bland and the reviews haven't been the hottest. Um, but if you like good political thrillers, um, right before the, <laughs> the midterm elections, make sure you check out the independent now streaming on Peacock. Um, let's see here. We found out that the new Evil Dead, Evil Dead Rise, is going to hit theaters on April 21st. So good to see that coming. Netflix's ad supported tier is officially launched, and you can get Netflix now for just $6.99 a month with ads. And it's also got a lot of other restrictions. So you get what you pay for, and I don't want to hear about it. Um, Bob Odenkirk's MCU debut reportedly is set for the Wonder Man series So we'll see, nothing confirmed there But that's the rumor going around Is that uh, he will be coming to Wonder Man Going back to Agatha Coven of Chaos They've also added Ali Ahn and Maria Dezia to the cast We have the trailer for Causeway Which is Jennifer Lawrence and Brian Tyree Henry's new drama film This actually came out over the weekend on Apple TV Plus, they dropped the trailer very, very late for this, but it looks like a super downer of a film. Um, but it looks like it's very well acted, so check it out on Apple TV Plus if you're interested. Justin Hartley leads Netflix's new Christmas rom com, The Noel Diary, so you can check out the trailer for that. Um, the Witcher season four, the original cast is set to return with the newly announced Liam Hemsworth led season. So for those of you hoping that nobody else would bounce, there you go. Uh, Ironheart set photos tease another comic character's MCU debut. I won't tell you what it is, but you can check out that article on our, up on our Twitter if you're looking to find out who this person may be. The Continental, the John Wick prequel, is set to stream on Prime Video internationally for our friends over the seas. In some shocking cancellation news, HBO canceled Westworld. That's right, after season four... That's it. It's done. No more Westworld. Everybody was hoping to get to season five. Uh, it sounds like the ratings crushed uh, or crashed, I should say, really bad after the last season aired. So they have decided to cancel Westworld. I loved season one of Westworld and then did not like season two very much and never got back into it. So um, I understand the cancellation. I do. Star Wars The Acolyte has officially added Daphne Keene to the cast. Of course, you'll mainly know her from his Dark Materials, but she was also X-23 X in Logan. So great to see her added to the Star Wars universe. She is definitely growing her resume. James Gunn says that DCU has a powerful vision and blueprint. Um, so this is really big here. Um, as a lot of people, you know, D we know James Gunn and Peter Safran took over DC Films or DC Studios on November 1st. We haven't really heard anything official yet, but James Gunn came out on Twitter um, over the weekend and basically was like, you know, because everybody's been blowing him up, like, give me this and give me this and bring Zack Snyder back and bring Legends of Tomorrow back and give us the, you know, Suicide Squad air cut and blah, 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 blah. So James Gunn came out and was like, yo. I'm going to address this. I heard all of you guys' request. 
Just know we're working really hard to build out a massive universe and really make you guys happy. And we're looking at a powerful vision and blueprint. And I like it. He was very diplomatic about it. And I know that they're looking to do something really great with the DC universe. And I feel very optimistic about the future of the DCU under their uh, leadership. So we're getting a TV version of The Gentleman, which was a movie that came out a couple years ago from Guy Ritchie. And Theo James, who can currently be seen in The White Lotus Season 2, is set to lead the series, um, which will be on Netflix. George and Tammy, we have the first trailer for that, starring Michael Shannon and Jessica Chastain. It's going to be a Showtime miniseries, so check out that new trailer. Um, Christmas in Paradise, we have the trailer for that, which is the Kelsey Grammer-led holiday movie. Lots of holiday movies, man. It's that, it's that time of the year. Julianne Moore uh, leads a new comedy thriller from A24 and Apple TV Plus called Sharper. And you can check out the first teaser trailer for that. Supposedly, back on the rumor mill, there's going to be a Grogu Disney Plus short that is coming later this month. And this was leaked by Disney Plus Italy, um, that they had something on their um, schedule, but then it got pulled down real quick. But there was something listed as a Grogu uh, holiday kind of thing that would be a little short. So we'll see. I would love to see a little Grogu uh, holiday special. Why not? So we'll keep our eyes posted for that. Um, we got an article up with Henry Cavill talking about his emotional moment of returning as Superman. Pretty cool stuff there, so check out. Winston Duke, uh, Umbaku from Black Panther is joining Ryan Gosling in the David Letch directed The Fall Guy. So they're really stacking up The Fall Guy. I'm getting excited for this film, so glad to see Winston Duke joining that. Um, the Gentleman series has also added Vinnie Jones, K.S. Scuderio, and Giancarlo Esposito, this dude's the hardest working man in show business. He's always popping up in everything. So great additions there to uh, the gentleman. Scream 6 and Dungeons and Dragons get new release dates. Scream 6 is actually moving up. It was coming at the end of March. Now it's going to come at the beginning of March. They kind of flip-flopped. So Dungeons and Dragons was coming out at the beginning of March. Scream 6 was coming out at the end of March. They flipped, so now Scream 6 comes out first in the beginning. Dungeons & Dragons comes out at the very end of March now. So not too much of a switch, um, but a switch nonetheless. So there you go there. Maria Bakalova is set to star alongside Eva Green and Ruby Rose on a new action thriller called Dirty Angels. Uh, they're looking to make another 28 later movie because there's 28 days later 28 weeks later now they're looking at doing 28 months later danny boyle is tempted to direct the long-awaited sequel i didn't like 28 days later very much but i did like 28 weeks later very much so we'll see i i would be down to check out 28 months later why not uh we have your must-see guide to all the holiday films that's right Christmas Time is Here, a must-have guide to 150 original holiday movies that are coming to Netflix, Hallmark, Lifetime, and a whole bunch more. We got your whole guide here if you're one of those people. Check out this article up on our social media to find out when and where to check everything out. Uh, Whose Line Is It Anyway is set to end after a 12th season on the CW. So long, long running show there. We have the first teaser trailer for Paramount Plus's Criminal Minds Revival. That's right. We have the first new teaser there. Uh, the first episode will also air on CBS to kind of suck you in, but it comes out on uh, Thanksgiving. So I actually really like this trailer. My wife watched Criminal Minds. I didn't, but this trailer is really good. And I think I'm going to watch this revival because it looks like a really cool story they're telling in, in it. So there you go. HBO Max was doing a Degrassi reboot while well, they've decided to no longer move forward. That's right. It has been canceled over on HBO Max. Dave Chappelle will host Saturday Night Live on November 12th um, with musical guest Blackstar. Um, let's see here. Stranger Things VR is coming soon. Put you in control of Vecna. I am sold. Let's do this. I'm super excited. I didn't think we were going to get another sequel to Don't Breathe, but it sounds like we're going to get Don't Breathe 3. Stephen Lang was doing an interview, and it sounds like he's ready to get back to work here. So, okay, I'm pretty sure he died in the last movie, but I'm sure they can figure something out. So, uh, But I'm down, man. I love the Don't Breathe movies, so let's go. Don't Breathe 3. Um, let's see here. 
Uh, James Gunn also talking about that they want to tell the biggest story ever told in DC Studios. So I love that, man. Long-term storytelling. That's what we've been lacking. So let's go, James Gunn. We just found out that Jimmy Kimmel is set to host the 2023 Oscars. So congratulations there. Sam Miller is set to direct Ewan McGregor in a new movie called A Gentleman in Moscow, which will be coming to Paramount Plus uh, and Showtime. So there you go there. Um, ratings, of course, are the reason that Westworld got canceled. The last season shrank from 12 million viewers to just four. That's a big fall from grace right there. Big, big fall from grace. Um, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse has added Daniel Kaluuya to the cast, and he will be voicing Spider-Punk. So there you go there. Pretty cool. We got a Zootopia TV show Coming uh, to Disney Plus It's called Zootopia Plus <laughs> Coming to Disney Plus So you can check out the first teaser for that A lot of people have been waiting for a Gears of War movie And it looks like we're finally getting it Netflix is developing a Gears of War movie Along with an animated adult series So there you go there Very, very cool Ryan Murphy shows have nabbed some Netflix renewals They have renewed Monster and The Watcher For new seasons Now Monster... Doesn't look like it's going to follow the Jeffrey Dahmer story anymore. He's just going to find a new monster to tell a story about. Uh, and then season two of The Watcher. So there you go. Monster has actually gotten a two-season renewal. And The Watcher has been given one. So Netflix looking to stay in the Ryan Murphy business. Um, very, very cool there. The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is officially rap production. We have your first look at some photos from Red One, which is the new holiday movie that The Rock and Chris Evans are doing. Uh, they just started filming and we got some quick little like production photos of them together, which look pretty cool. Um, the Acolyte from Star Wars has officially started filming, so that's awesome. We have the official first full, full trailer for Knives Out 2, Glass Onion. Um, this is ahead of its theatrical release during Thanksgiving weekend. Um, so this looks awesome. I'm so excited for this. So check out that trailer if you haven't seen it. Uh, James Cameron says he is willing to cut the Avatar franchise short if the way of water bombs. I don't think it's going to bomb, but I don't know what his... Thought logic is about bombing But we know he's already filmed part two and, Or part three and part four And he's already started filming some of part five So uh, it's crazy, it's crazy So we'll see what happens I don't know what he means by cut short If he's already got movies in the can But there you go Carnival Row over on Amazon Prime Is uh, returning in February And it is official that it has been cancelled as well too So it will not have any more than its second season When it comes out in February um, we got an interview up with Sylvester Stallone speaking about his battle for the rights to the Rocky franchise and the future of Rambo. So check that out if you're interested. Uh, Andy Serkis talking about why he didn't come back to do Venom three. Basically it's just scheduling. He wanted to do it and it just, his schedule didn't align with doing Venom three. So pretty simple there. We have your mid-season schedule for NBC, for ABC, for Fox. So find out when all your shows are coming back there. Disney Plus's Percy Jackson series has officially added Lin-Manuel Miranda as the Greek god Hermes. Uh, so very cool there. The Wonder Years. I love this show, but it's been delayed. ABC has pushed season two. Actually, I think it's season three, isn't it? I think it's season three, not season two. Um, but they pushed it to the summer of 2023. So that's a bummer. We got a long ways to go. It's going to be like a year since the last season aired. So summer of 2023 for the million years. A Million Little Things, speaking of a million years, A Million Little Things is set to end with season five. That's right. So season five is coming out soon, but it will be the final season. And like I said, Carnival Row is ending with season two on Amazon. Netflix has renewed, we already talked about The Watcher for Season 2 and Monster returning for Season 2 and 3. Um, let's see here. Oh, are you ready to find out who is People Magazine's sexiest man alive? Sexiest. It is Captain America himself, Chris Evans. That's right, Chris Evans uh, taking the crown this year. For Sexiest Man Alive And uh, there you go So can't argue with that one man I'm very comfortable in my sexuality And I can agree That uh Yeah 
Chris Evans. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. So uh, let's see here. So we also got, I'm sorry, I'm trying to pull it up here. My internet is acting a little funky. Why are we acting so funky? There we go. Uh, give me one sec. Okay. So the Acolyte. This is the new Star Wars show. And um, they have announced that they have started production. And they've announced some of the official casting. Because we've had a lot of rumors. But the Star Wars wanted to come out. So we got Amanda Steinberg. We got Lee Jung Jae. Manny Jacinto. Daphne Keene. Jody Turner-Smith. Rebecca Henderson, Charlie Barnett, Dean Charles Chapman, and Carrie Ann Moss. That's right. Trinity herself has joined the cast. So this is a really strong cast. I love Carrie Ann Moss. Charlie Barnett is great. Uh, Daphne Keene is great. Jody Turner-Smith is good. I love Amanda Steinberg. Uh, Lee Jung Jae from Squid Game. And then you got Manny Jacinto, who's awesome on The Good Place um, and really growing his resume. So really strong stuff for the Acolyte. So congratulations there. This is our full cast. I love it. <clears throat> okay. Um, moving along. Ted Lasso star Brett Goldstein and SNL's Bowen Yang are joining Chris Pratt, Samuel Jackson, Hannah Waddingham, Cicely Strong, and more in the cast of the upcoming animated Garfield movie. So there you go. Um, that's cool there. The Kelly Clarkson show has been renewed through 2025, so great addition there for her to get that. Queen Sugar um, alum, Queen Sugar and Ted Lasso alums have joined the new Chuck Lore HBO Max comedy that they're doing. Um, let's see here. And I think, sorry, I told you my internet's acting up, so I'm losing a lot of my notes here. All of a sudden, nothing's loading. But I believe that is it. Yes, that is it. That is the end of my notes, and that is the end of our show. So thank you so much for tuning in and uh, listening again with me for another uh, right around the 40-minute mark, so not too shabby. But thank you so much once again for joining us um, and getting caught up with all the latest and greatest entertainment news television movies and reviews right here on am i on the air make sure you bookmark our website am i on the air.com and of course check out all the socials make sure you like us on facebook at facebook.com slash am i on the air follow us on twitter at am i on the air uh if you want to support the show through cash app or through venmo or anything else check out our show notes and it has links right there if you want to donate anything to the show um, make sure you subscribe to us on Apple Podcast or Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcast, iHeartRadio, anywhere podcast stream. Make sure you bookmark it wherever you want to listen to. Um, thank you. And make sure you subscribe to us on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Just search Am I on the Air? And thank you to our great affiliates at reddragonsradio.com. Follow on Twitter at Red Dragons Radio. Our great affiliate at Pop Culture Pros. Follow on Twitter at Pop Culture underscore Pros. And that'll do it for us this week. Like I said, this weekend is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Uh, we'll be doing an Am I Still on the Air spoiler review of it next week. So uh, look for that around Wednesday or Thursday of next week. Of course, I'll have the non-spoiler review on Monday. Um, but that's the big one this weekend, guys. So we'll be ready for that. I hope you all have an amazing week. Take care of yourselves and each other. And until next time, y'all. Peace. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening. Red Dragons! Red Dragons!